said, OK, I got the LA Times and started looking through um, for jobs, thinking I'm going to find something like him, like a chauffeur job. There was nothing like that whatsoever. But there was one job that jumped out. And I grabbed the paper and I realized it said, live in, all food, own room, credit card, car, $125 a week. I was like, oh my god, that's a big growth from the 40 a week I was getting in the parachute regiment. Then there was the kicker, two words that killed me, child care. <laughs> and Nick said, you're kidding me, right? I mean, you're a commando. Mary, Mary Poppins meets commando. What are you going to do if the kids misbehave? Shoot them? <laughs> said, Very funny, Nick. Desperate times, de desperate measures, mate. I need a job. So we ca I called up and made an appointment for that night. And uh, I go up there and I knock on the door and there's a woman lets me in to this vestibule area where there's a bunch of you know, fairly overweight, uniformed Central American women. And my, they start looking at me. They've heard me say, I'm here for the nanny job. And it was like <laughs> sniggering. <laughs> who's this loser English guy, I sat down and went, you know, eventually went through person after person, next, next, get called in. I'm in this huge room in Beverly Hills and there's this guy, he's about 55, he's on his second wife, obviously she's about, you know, she's got her boobs and everything, the Beverly Hills thing, she's about 30 and I walk in and the guy looks up and says, what the hell are you here for? I'm, saying, I'm here for the, uh, the uh, childcare position, sir, you know, I'm coming in. Hey, childcare, how old are you? I said, I'm 22, I'm almost 23, I'm 22. He said, 22? We have a three-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 19-year-old, and now we're going to get a 22-year-old, another kid? I don't need another kid. I need, to, I need someone to take care of the kids. And his wife says, wait a minute, Irv, wait a minute. Where are you from, Mark? I said, oh, I'm from London, ma'am. He said, we love London. <laughs> said, and her husband looked at that like, are you freaking crazy? Get this kid out of here. I went through this quick interview where you know, he goes to and he starts to find every reason, and those of you in the business school well, and the film school know it's going to be about overcoming objections. And so he tried to give every reason why I wasn't qualified for this job, which starts with, you can see we're rich, Mark, right? I look around, uh, yeah, I can see you're rich. He said, that's because we don't spend much money. And the childcare person is also the housekeeper. Can you clean, Mark? He said, you have the right man, sir. British Army. They came around with a white glove inspection looking for dust. They never found any dust on my locker. I'm the best cleaner you're ever going to meet. And his wife looks at him like, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> then, he, then he says to me, OK, but the house, this is true, but it's not a made up thing. He said, also, the housekeeper has to do the washing and ironing. And he does this, shows me his shirt, crease. He says, you see that? That's not the dry cleaners. That's, that'll be your job. Can you wash and iron? I said, again, British Army. I could make a crease in your shirt that you could shave with, sir. And, <laughs> and the woman again is like, looking, told you so, is hating every moment. Uh, but then he got me. He says, can you cook, Mark? <laughs> I said, sir, I'm British. <laughs> My mother can't even cook. <laughs> the next morning, 10 a.m., the phone rings. It's Patty, the woman, who says, took me all night, but I've convinced Irv that we should try something different. Why do you always need the traditional nanny housekeeper, let's try this young English guy, it'll be good security for the house. And I went over there an hour later, first job in America was unloading a dishwasher, I've never even seen a dishwasher before in my life, and that was the beginning of America, a nanny in Beverly Hills.